The following presentation shows correct procedures to follow for the most frequent operations using the IBM 3480 magnetic tape subsystem. After you see it, you should be able to do most work using the subsystem. However, this presentation does not replace the printed publications for the subsystem. Important details about the operations shown in this presentation and on other operations which are not frequently performed are contained in the operator's guide. Information about messages which appear on the 3480 operator panel message display is in both the planning and migration guide and in the operator's guide. Another publication provides more information and detail on the tape cartridges. The new IBM 3480 a high-performance magnetic tape subsystem, complete with half-inch magnetic recording tape stored in a compact cartridge. The IBM 3480 magnetic tape subsystem consists of a control unit and from one to four tape units. Each tape unit has two tape drives in it. Inserting and removing tape cartridges is easy and tape threading is automatic. Using correct procedures will ensure easy operation and help maintain peak performance of the subsystem. The parts of the subsystem that you will use are the drive operator panel, the tape cartridge, the cartridge entry opening and door, the drive switch panel, and the control unit switch panel. The drive operator panel can be turned to either side to make it easier to see and use. Snap detents hold it securely in your preferred position. You'll use the drive operator panel and its various displays for most of your work with the subsystem. It has three switches. A selected indicator that is lit when the drive is transferring data, attention bars that light when you need to go to the drive, and a message display for operational information. All subsystems show status messages. Status messages don't require you to do anything, they just tell you what the drive is doing. The simplest message is a single asterisk. This shows that there is no cartridge in the drive and that it is available for work. These are some status messages. The U or F displayed in the last character tells what the file protect status of the tape cartridge is. U means unprotected. F means file protected. Other messages read locating, erasing, end of tape, rewinding, unloading. These messages are not requests for operator action. They tell about automatic operations. You don't need to do anything when these messages are displayed. Some messages are requests for operator action. Most of these ask that a tape cartridge be mounted or demounted. If an M is displayed, you should mount a tape cartridge in the drive. The volume serial number of the tape cartridge to be mounted also appears in the display. The last character tells you the label type of the volume. S is for standard. N is no label. A is ANSI. X is a non-standard label. And a question mark means the cartridge has an unknown label type. A D means to demount the tape cartridge that is in the drive. A K means to demount it and keep it in the library. An R means to demount the cartridge but retain it near the drive for reuse. If more than one action is required, the messages alternate on the display. Not all subsystems will show cartridge mount demount messages. The system console also gives information on cartridge mounting. Don't carry too many cartridges in your hands. You might drop them. If you need to carry a lot, use a cart or carrier. Don't put more than six cartridges in the stack and be sure the stack isn't where it can be knocked over. As you recall, the M means to insert a cartridge. To insert the tape cartridge, first set the file protect selector. Set the selector to the flat side with the white dot showing if a cartridge is to be file protected. If the cartridge is to be used for reading, writing, and erasing data, set the selector in the unprotected position with the round side showing. 
Make sure the selector is securely in its detent to prevent it from slipping. This is a good time to make sure the cartridge is clean and free from damage. You should also make sure the leader block is properly seated. Press on it with your finger. You will have trouble inserting the cartridge the wrong way around, and the door won't close. The cartridge is facing the right way with the drive mechanism on the bottom, the smooth side on top, the leader block toward the drive. When you insert the cartridge correctly and close the door, the tape threads and processing starts automatically. When processing is complete, the drive door opens automatically and the tape cartridge can be removed. Drives that are used a lot may put the clean message on the display. You should insert a cleaning cartridge at the next convenient break in processing to initiate the special cleaning cycle. Ordinarily, of course, you should use the cleaning cartridge on each drive on a regular schedule, at least once a week, even without the clean message. You should also clean a drive if it has been reset. All drives in a subsystem that has been powered off should be cleaned when you resume processing. When the cycle is done, the cleaning cartridge unloads automatically. That's all there is to it. The switches on the operator's panel also let you open the drive door. During normal operations, when the job is completed, the drive automatically rewinds and unloads the tape, and the cartridge door opens automatically. However, the drive door can also be closed when there is no cartridge mounted. When you need to put a cartridge in an empty drive with a closed door, just open the door by pressing unload. Don't try to open the door by pulling up on it. You will damage the machine if you force the door. Use the switch. In addition to knowing about the cartridges and tape drives, you should know how to control the power to the subsystem and how to do an initial microprogram load, or IML. One of the uses for the switches and indicators is to control the power to the subsystem. In emergencies, you can remove all power from the subsystem immediately. Move the unit emergency power switch to power off. The normal procedures for removing and restoring power are a little slower. Extra steps are included to protect the system and any jobs that might be using the 3480 subsystem. First, vary the drives and channel paths offline on each system. Then, at the control unit switch panel, move the control unit online offline switch to offline. The indicator comes on when it is offline. You might have to wait up to five minutes for all work using the drives to be completed before the indicator comes on. When it does, unload and remove any cartridges left in the drives. Be sure the local remote power switch is in local. Remove power from the subsystem using the power on off switch. Remember, use these steps to remove power from the 3480 subsystem. To resume using a subsystem that has been powered off, first press the power enable switch. Then make sure the IML diskette is inserted into the diskette drive and that the diskette drive door latch is closed. Be sure the local remote power switch is in local. Then restore the power with the power on off switch. An initial microprogram load occurs automatically when power is restored. The light on the diskette drive is lit and the wait indicator flickers to tell you that the IML is taking place. When the IML is complete, the light on the diskette drive goes out and the wait indicator is lit continuously. Set the local remote power switch according to your requirements. Put the control unit online offline switch in online. When the offline indicator goes out, the procedure is complete. Then vary the channel paths and drives back online on the desired systems. In review, to restore power to a subsystem that has been powered off, use these steps. The initial microprogram load can also be performed with power still on. The microprogram on the IML diskette determines how the subsystem works. Some error conditions may result in the need for an additional IML. Doing an IML when the subsystem is processing data can cause data to be lost. Be sure that an IML is really needed. Before doing the IML, vary the drives and channel paths offline on each system. Then at the control unit switch panel, 
move the control unit online offline switch to offline. The indicator will come on when it is offline. After you have waited for all work using the drives to finish and when the CU offline indicator is lit, press the IML switch to start the IML. When the IML is complete, the light on the diskette drive goes out and the wait light is lit continuously. To resume processing, put the control unit back online and vary the channel paths and drives back on. Use these steps to perform an IML efficiently and without risk to the system or to jobs which were using the subsystem. Occasionally, a check code or special symbols will indicate a problem with the drive unit. Write whatever is on the message display for the service representative's later use. In general, whenever there is a drive problem, try to retrieve the cartridge. Make the drive not ready. Next, press unload. The cartridge should unload. It may take a little while to rewind before unloading. If the cartridge does not unload within about three minutes, record any check codes on the message display. Then press unload again. If the drive again fails to unload within about three minutes, record any new check codes displayed. If the cartridge does not unload, press the drive reset switch. Then press unload again. Use these steps to unload a cartridge from a drive only if the drive does not unload automatically. If the drive unloads the cartridge, inspect the cartridge for damage. If these steps fail, a service representative will have to remove the cartridge. The procedure you've just seen should be used if cartridges were left in the drives after a power off or a power failure, if a cartridge did not rewind or unload, or if the drive door did not open after cartridge processing has completed, or if you need to insert a cartridge and the drive door is closed. There are a few other problems that you might be able to recover from. If the drive displays are blank, make sure that power to the control unit is on. If a drive does not become ready or begin processing, make sure the ready not ready switch is in the ready position. The leader block might be damaged or come loose from the tape. It can be replaced using the leader block repair kit. Cartridges whose leader blocks have been replaced are damaged. They should be loaded only once more after repair to recover the data on the tape. They should not be reused. You should rarely experience problems. Proper tape cartridge handling and following good operating procedures are the keys for maintaining peak performance of the IBM 3480 magnetic tape subsystem. And the keys are in your hands.